Hello everybody and welcome to the 19th part of our Python IT Kinter programming tutorial video where we're actually building a full sized application. So where we left off is we were basically adding all the menu items, kind of creating the back end structure to how those will work. Um, some of them are actually doing what their actual job is, some of them still need some uh, building up to actually realize what has been done. Um, but yeah, so so now we're going to add the last thing, which is uh, the tutorial option. We're just going to kind of show um, when you go to help tutorial. We're not going to actually write the tutorial because the program isn't complete yet. So there's not much point to write a full tutorial when um, that might not be the best tutorial for the end result. Um, but anyway, we're going to actually we're just going to show like how like we might do a tutorial. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to actually we've already defined tutorial. Uh, let me just cut that and we'll put that up here. So tutorial no longer will pass. Um, we've got a couple of things. Um, we are going to go ahead and define page two as. Um, Actually, I think on this, I'm trying to think here. Uh, maybe, I'm just, okay, because we're going to start, tut, sorry, I didn't really quite think this through. Because this one, in my, in my actual code, I use that leave mini. Um, well, we'll change that maybe at the very end. So for now, we'll say leave mini, what, and then what, Diet destroy. Okay, so then define page two will be um, leave mini. So in theory, I think what I could do is just like tut dot destroy, and then we could do tut two right equals tk dot capital tk. And in fact, let me just comment this out. We might not need that after all. So the you know, the load up tutorial, it'll load a window and then they'll progress into page two, which will redefine itself. Um, TK.TK. Um, and then we'll do define page three like this. And then again, we'll do tut two dot destroy. And basically, you would continue doing this all the way to as deep as you wanted it to go. But for now, we'll just go to three pages. Um, and this will basically force a specific succession. You might not want a specific succession. You might actually want your tutorial to have like a navigation bar to it and people can pick ver various options. I've always been a huge fan of like clicking on a tutorial and having them walk me through the application one step at a time and that be it. I've always found those to be the most beneficial to me. You might change your mind and if you do feel free to write your own little tutorial that you think is superior and if it's good enough share the code with me and we'll let the user decide if they want to walk through or more of a navigation you know you can always have two tutorials um, so page three tut two dot destroy um, and then we define tutorial three so tut three for example uh, would equal tk dot tk and basically what happens is around um, so, so like we haven't actually defined the tutorial page yet, uh, and we will. It will be like down here. I'll point to the screen. You can't see the screen. It'll be down here. <laughs> and then page two's definition will have page three. And whenever we're ready for page three, and because like basically what we'll have is we'll have page two code here. And then the button that you click next, the command for next will be page three, which destroys page two loads up page three with whatever data is in page three. So that's how it works. So what we'll do is we'll put some code here now. Um, so tut3 equals tk.tk, tut3.wm underscore title. Uh, we'll call this part three. And uh, we'll say label equals ttk.capitallabel uh, tut3 um, text will equal part three. And then the font that we use, uh, we're going to use just the norm underscore font like that. Good enough. And then we're going to do label dot pack. As usual with our labels, we do side top uh, fill x and patty 10. Why not 190 10? 
then we're gonna have b1 equals ttk dot button with a capital b um, that button goes to toot three text is since this is the last one we're gonna say the text is done and then the command itself will just be tut three dot destroy easy enough then we're gonna do b whoops b one dot pack and then tut three dot main loop okay so that's page three but now we have to define page two right so this is what will run when the user clicks the same kind of structured button as here and it'll run tut, instead of running tut 3destroy it runs page 3 which just so happens to be the first thing that page 3 does is destroy page 2 uh, and then it runs page 3 so now um, after, now that we've defined page 3 we need to define page 2 and page 2 will basically be exactly the same as page 3 so I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this and then put it here paste and highlight this section Hold control, open brackets, that should shift it over if that doesn't work for you, sorry. Uh, and now instead of tut three, this is tut two. It's not part three, it's part two. It's not tut three, it's two, it's part two. Uh, not done, next. And then not tut three dot destroy, it's actually tut two. Actually, no, it's not even any destroy. It would be the command is page three page three packs and then not tut two main loop tut I mean not tut three main loop tut two main loop okay <laughs> and now we define um, the main tutorial um, and so so for example um, we'll just we'll write this one ourselves so we'll say tut and then that equals tk dot tk and then tut dot wm underscore title tittle equals tutorial and then we're gonna have label equals cdk dot label and as that's gonna be to tut the text will be what do you need help with and the font will be norm underscore all caps font okay now label dot pack as usual, our packs are always the same, so let's go ahead and just copy this right here. I'm not going to write that again. Uh, paste. Good. Um, and now uh, is where we're going to put in some buttons. So, And this is what I was talking about before. You don't actually have to have a walkthrough necessarily. Like the user might just have a simple question. So like for example, um, we could have a B1 equals uh, tdk.button. That button goes to tut. And the text of that button equals uh, overview of the application. So this is the one that's going to walk them through step by step in a very linear progression methodology. That is what we basically coded up in this window here that I'm pointing to that you can't see. Uh, overview of the application. And then command, if they do that, would be page two. Okay, and that's this function, which immediately destroys the tutorial, starts up a new window, loads up page three, just in case we call it and then runs page two and you know in theory gives a tutorial so or the second part of our tutorial um, so that's for button one then we'll just say b one dot pack easy enough um, so we don't have to type everything all again let's just copy that uh, well actually that needs to be empty parameters there so copy this and then paste twice paste paste now we're going to talk about b2 b2 and this will be b3 b3 so for b2 what do we want button two to do? Well, button two, maybe the user uh, wants just to know how to trade. So how do I trade with this client? Okay, the command here, uh, we're gonna say uh, for now is just lambda colon pop-up message not yet completed. Um, and then this other one will be the same thing with the command not yet completed. So copy that paste so they're both you know commands not yet completed and then so someone might ask um, how do I trade with this client and then someone else might ask a popular question that people want to know is um, uh, is with indicator questions help you know how do indicators work that sort of thing another one is how do I get an API uh, you know how do I acquire API information because to trade on the various exchanges you have to connect to the API on that exchange 
Um, so people might ask that question. And then finally, when everything's all said and done, however, we're gonna do tut.main loop empty parms. And that's that. That is our tutorial function. So now, well, you could save and run that, hopefully without error, but we'll see. Now we have help, tutorial. They click on a tutorial, this little window comes up. What do you need help with? They might click, uh, how do I trade with this client? That's not yet completed. Um, that's not yet completed. <laughs> Overview of the application, however, they click that. A new window pops up, part two. We didn't pack the button. Good job. Okay, one second, let's go pack that button. Oh, actually, we got a trace back. Ah. Let's see if I can figure it out before we get there, but I'm not seeing it. Oh, here it is. Here's our trace back right here. Figured it out, guys. So we packed. That's the reason the button didn't even show up either. The button was packed to tut three. We do tut two. But we still might. Let's see if I can figure out if we have another trace back somewhere. I'm not seeing why we would. Or another error. <laughs> another trace back. Anyway, we'll have to watch for trace back. Uh, help, tutorial, overview, part two, next, part three. Awesome. Done. Okay, that worked. No errors besides the syntax stack counter nonsense. Awesome. So, um, what this wording is up here, by the way, is just that we have this these um, default values. Um, there's a couple of things that we could do to like get away from this, but we're just gonna leave them there for now. It's not like a it's not a world stopping error. As you can see, the application still runs. It's really just more of a syntactical uh, problem. Guido would be very unhappy with me. Um, so anyways, I, I, the tutorial is done now. I mean, it's not at least the back end. So this would be simple questions that people might have. This would be like a walkthrough tutorial. So they click on that. Now they're learning about one part. They're, it says, you know, click on top indicator, add RSI, click 14. Awesome, you've added a top indicator. Okay, so that's part two. Then they hit next because they're done. Now you can add bottom indicators. Click on bottom indicator, and so on. Okay, so you can do that all the way through. Really walk the client through how the um, walk the client how the client works. <laughs> anyway, um, so that's that. Um, so now we've got all of the menu options that I initially want us to cover, and now we need to start building those menu options. So a lot of them are fairly easy, but we're, well, some of them are fairly easy. The rest, of, most of these are going to require some pretty fancy code. And at this point, this is where this program is going to heavily veer off into weighing more so into the actual purpose of this client. So up until this point, we've really built a backbone that really could be supported by a, a huge array of clients. Um, but now we're actually going to be um, really building this client up for this very specific purpose of working with um, Bitcoin trading and all of that. Um, the main thing that I would say is still pertinent to anybody else is what we'll end up doing with trading, especially manual trading. What manual trading is going to do is it's going to open up another window. So it'll be another window, but it's still part of the application itself. So you'll have two windows, uh, mostly because people may want to put, you know, their trading window over here, the main graph window over here. You should let them kind of orient where everything is. Um, so, and that was actually something that people kind of voted on on Reddit. So that's the way we're going to do it. So anyways, um, so that's that. That's what you guys have to look forward to. We're going to start working on uh, getting this graph to connect or this client to connect to the C of BTC for the daily data. Uh, then working on the open ILO close, actually adding the indicators, that kind of stuff. And then after that, um, trading, that kind of stuff. Also, pause, resume doesn't actually work at the moment. Um, anyway, that kind of stuff. So we're really going to actually start pulling this application together and uh, making something interesting out of it now. So anyways, we've got a nice back end. Hopefully you guys are enjoying. Um, I was, I've really enjoyed doing this, really this series and actually working on this application. I didn't really know if, if you could do something like this in, in Python successfully. So um, I'm pretty confident we can. The major hurdle I think now in the future is, is actually threading this application, but I know with 100% certainty it's possible. I just have not done it, so that'll be a hurdle. Anyway, um, if you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, you know the deal as always. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And actually, thank you for donations as well. I have received, I've started receiving donations. Someone actually mailed me a check uh, the other day for this specific series. So um, thank you so much uh, for those. So anyways, um, 
Uh, stay tuned to the next video. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support subscriptions. Until next time.